2077 right now. I, that's what I've been doing, don't worry. <laughs> to be fair, Thandrin spent the last session pretending he was somewhere else too, probably. Or at least trying to figure yeah. out where he was. No, which... he knew where he was, but he just wanted to be somewhere else. No, no, he was but... looking through the playbill going, where does this scene take place? Why is <laughs> there glitter the all over my hands? <laughs> um, actually, he probably figured glitter. that out pretty quickly. Uh, hello. Hello, and welcome to Critical Knowledge. This is a 5th edition homebrew Dungeons & Dragons campaign set in a persistent campaign no, world. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you want disagreements. That's two doors down. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, three doors down is actually a, a room where you'll hear some music. But never mind about that. Um, moving forward. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Chaos Crew. Uh, my name is Crash. I will be your DM for this evening frantically trying to insert plot where no one wants plot to be. Uh, with me today are a collection of individuals, Chris, who I think actually wants some plot, who clings to the plot with his fingernails, <laughs> desperately I trying like, to make <laughs> sense of what's taking place. I love, I, love, I, love, I love story and plot and structure. I regret yes. so many things. <laughs> Ellie, who is just so happy to be here. I broke it, the plotter. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> April, who doesn't really care for hats at this point. Matt, who I don't have a really neat thing to say right now, unfortunately. I came up with these on the fly. Millie, That's who is okay. Chaos Incarnate. And Her Eric, who is just here to roll You're for initiative. The <laughs> yeah, I'm probably going to roll for again. I made a new plot with glitter crayons. Yes, well, you left the Very glitter crayons. I was about to say, you left the glitter crayons at home, but I don't want to speak for you. You might be taking them with you, I just realized. Excuse Eric, me, yeah. <laughs> serious question, though, Eric. What's your bonus to initiative? Um, I think it's just one, but, like, the last four rolls I've done has been, like, four and two, and it hasn't been, hasn't been well. It hasn't been well. My, I mean, you don't need to roll high on it. Sorry, you go. My character in the five o'clock game has, has a minus one to initiative, so... I have a plus four. You're also we a dex-based get... character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and here's the I thing. <laughs> the, the character Jaren doesn't need to roll high on initiative because <laughs> the character Jaren rolls high on inflict wounds damage. <laughs> uh, that's, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Need it, no stinking healing. It, it's like when you see that martial arts movie where there's this one guy just standing and watching the whole fight and you know they're going to do something cool, they're going to do something cool, and then they do one thing while you blink and you miss it and everyone else is down. That's Jaren. <laughs> Alright, so before I assign different stereotypes from martial arts movies to all the other characters... Everybody roll for initiative! No! What <laughs> happened last time? Okay, okay so we had a play! And then after the play, that might have been two times ago, but that's not important. There was after a play one time After the play, ago. which we did really, really well, um... Then, then the then the cool angel came back, and they were my friend, and they brought me a new testy too, and we chatted, and we had a good talk. But apparently, all of our cool, super cool items, which other people apparently like got like through like all this family stuff, because like I got mine just by taking it off a dead body one day. Anyway, all of our really cool things apparently might be have this like dark past, and so we're going with them to this place on a vacation, and we're gonna see. If our items are, like, evil and filled with the spirits of evil monsters, or whether, you know, like, phylacteries, I think the word was, or Indeed. whether or not they're just items that are just kind of cool. Um, and if so, if my object's evil, I demanded I get something similar, because I really just want something that lets me throw daggers infinitely. Like, so if I can get something else that lets me do that, like, I'm game. I'm not too picky. Other people have, like, attachments to things, but, like, I just like shiny things. Anyway, so that's where we're going. We're going with the nice angel lady who gives me things. Having listened to this, Arepa is all in favor of going somewhere where there are unlimited pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have enough alcohol to deal with you today. Unfortunately... <laughs> Pineapples do not natively grow in the small kingdom of Coomridge. 
We're visiting Eric's homeland again. You are not. <laughs> we, we are not. <laughs> we do. What? Not currently. <laughs> I I can see that happening at some point in the future, and then we will get to revisit Eric's wonderful accent <laughs> that he uses for the people of Plantain. And do you guys want them? <laughs> because someone who is Puerto Rican gets to use whatever Puerto Rican stereotypes he wants. If you like pina coladas, yes, yes. Look, I the do. accent is bad, but it is mine, and that's all that problem. All right. With that said, uh, the nice angel lady, as you have decided to refer to her as. What's the uh, nice angel lady's actual name for the, for what the people that don't know? <laughs> I anticipated this, and I'm uh, copy pasting it. Give me a second. Thank you, dear. <laughs> oh, oh wait, you actually wrote I was, down. I was ha- <laughs> yes, I write down my notes. I was halfway. Oh, that is the wrong copy paste. I, I was about to copy paste our Twitch chat from the equivalent of Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, that's there a great use of that spell there, hun. X. Okay. Excella. Uh, so Excella. What do I call her? Like. Excel, like, like, word, like, you know, like Microsoft Excel. Excel. I was, just, I was just <laughs> going to say, even though her name begins with an A, but yes, if access your... <laughs> we keep talking over you, Elliot. Trash, sorry, Trash is, Crash is going to take away every inspiration I get for the entire rest of the campaign. From me, because, well, I just because never you get start referring to her as an Excel spreadsheet. Out of me. <laughs> so yeah, can I start George, calling her Clippy? <laughs> Excel is so, great for right? I have no idea what you just said, Ellie. <laughs> I, I'm going to sigh heavily, even though I don't know what you said, because I'm assuming it deserves a sigh. So what did you say? I'm, I said Excel is great at spreading sheets, right? And I did a finger so gun. So um, I, like that. I, I really enjoy puns in general. But by the same time, I'm going to say I was correct about the sigh. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and for Clippy, there is a podcast called the Date Night Podcast, where they spell it D8 Night Podcast, where yeah. there is a gnome wizard, a gnome mage, who has been creating a homunculus, and he put a paper clip inside this thing of, of goo. Yeah. So they've been calling it Clippy this entire time. It does have googly eyes. Awesome. Yes. So because of that, I'm going to say, no, you can't call anyone Clippy because that name has been taken. So playing D&D, you have taken a teleportation circle. This was arranged by Excella, as I was saying before I really interrupted myself, I believe, uh, to the temple grounds in Clear Spring, Coombridge. Now, when I say the temple grounds, you might think you're going to appear inside this vast temple structure, and in which case you are mostly correct, but it is very obvious when you appear that the temple is under construction. There are portions of it that appear complete. They've got roofs and everything. There are towers. There's flying buttresses. Most of them are covered in scaffolding, and most of them are clearly not as high as they're going to be. Uh, There Uh, are buttresses. (laughs) Thank you. I'm glad I wasn't the only one. (laughs) I was trying to be quiet long enough to actually, like, show up in the plot, but now we're laughing again. (laughs) We're getting there. There are several teams of dwarves working diligently to move stone blocks around and put them in position and mix mortar and doing all the things that you'd see at a construction site. Uh, There is one group of dwarves where there's one dwarf that's putting masonry masonry blocks down while there's three others that are watching them do that. Uh, there's there's one that's holding a sign that says slow and stop, and every so many minutes they just turn it to face the other way. That's mean. Um, can I stick my paw in any cement? It depends <laughs> on whether or not one of your party members is going to attempt to stop you. <laughs> Let me roll for uh, for stealth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'll spot that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, with your uh, what was it? Your your uh, perception of uh, zero. Yeah, um, I, I got I a would twenty-three. Make fun of my perception, but I would have to have some first. Yeah, okay, I wouldn't probably wouldn't roll that either. I got a twenty-three. 
I want to roll perception. <laughs> I mean, you got true uh, sight. I got a 13. Roll again because I'm giving you advantage. You've got true sight. Yeah. Oh, nice. 23. Okay, so you see, you see the tabaxi child going towards the the large pile of cement. Meanwhile, I'm talking with with Jared and going relatives of yours. <laughs> oh yes, all dwarves are related. Thanks. For <laughs> Which is dwarven hand on his forehead. Uh, I also got a fifteen for a sleight of hand check. <laughs> They all saw you. I. <laughs> no, I got... Hero. <laughs> yep. Yeah, probably, You probably don't want to step in that. Oh, I want to. It's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be worse than when I singed your fur. Yeah, but it'll leave my mark on society forever. So, question to the people here: Are we actually traveling with a child? Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah apparently so. Pretty much, a, a child with unmedicated ADD. <laughs> right. Okay then. Yes. Um. So. Did the angel I'm did taking it. come with us, or was she? Did oh she yeah. Oh yeah. She came with you. She's okay. trying to be your guide, <laughs> and of course, the first thing that happens when you all arrive here, and she's saying. Okay, everyone, mind your step as you're stepping off the teleportation circle. Right this way, Hero runs off to go and put his paw in some cement. <laughs> I need to leave, like, the paw print you see in the sidewalk. Okay. It, are you intending to do anything print. else as you see the rest of the party walking away? We're going in a different direction, I'm sure. <laughs> and, and maybe... maybe and and, and based him. on... Sorry, what was that? I will just, just, I can knock him unconscious if we want, and we just carry him. No, yes. no, that would, we would need them at the, we would need him as a, at, the, at a time when they'd be unconscious, so. <laughs> That's how the wor- law works, Murphy's law. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <sighs> I've been All volunteering right. for several weeks with a small group of orphans, and I must say that I am philosophically opposed to violence against children. I'd prefer if we did not take that path. However, I am quite skilled at grapple checks if one of those <laughs> might be required. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, since since uh, Auntie Nix didn't exactly like force me to not do it... Well, I'm assuming that your paw is completely coated in cement at this point. Yeah, I, I, I dipped it in yeah. and then I jump over the construction and leap over and walk behind them again like nothing happened. <laughs> Okay, except there's how cement much? dripping from one of your paws. It's fine. How much, <laughs> how much damage does Hero take from the cement? Nothing yet. None, it's uh, wet. Yet. But uh, it's, it's I, I'm a big yet. fan of actions having repercussions, but the cement has not cured yet. I also uh, casually wipe it off on, um, because uh, who was it that got a one? <laughs> who was it that got... Well, oh, that was another dwarf. Uh, you, you may attempt wipe to wipe it off, it off but your your paw is covered in fur. Wiping is not no, something that's going to help you. It's the worst thing you could that's do. Just a pad. That's what you're saying, but I didn't tell you what the, the difficulty was for putting oh, your no. paw in <laughs> cement. And I did point out your paw was covered. So let's move forward because oh, so Excella is continuing pawing. to escort you into a one of the more completed buildings and inside this building um, are but i do try to wipe my paw off on um dad's clothes when they aren't looking everything <laughs> <laughs> i i note for the record um having had personal experience with this cement is corrosive even before it dries <laughs> oh this ought to be Hero, fun give me a constitution save. Oh, joy. <laughs> you did it's this to yourself? It. No, it's completely worth it. And once again, <laughs> how I play Paige, is, I mean, not Paige, uh, Hero is literally like whatever comes to mind first. I mean, they're the same thing at this point. <laughs> did you say constitution save? Constitution, yes. Yes. Okay. I got a 19. Okay, you take one point <laughs> of acid damage this time. Damn! My hand hurts. Well, don't stick your hand in the cement again. 
Such a boo boo. Oh my gosh, that is exactly what my father would say. Oh no. Oh no. I have had the worst possible thought. Maybe don't share it with this particular group. Hero is going Hero is absolutely going to try and wash the cement off in the first water he sees. Oh, that's far better than what I thought Hero would do. Uh, so, what we're going to say next is the the building you walk into is mostly one giant room. There's some doors in the back that might lead to other portions inside the structure, but other than what appears to be like a small narthex area, it's mostly a large room that has several sets of lenses with strange runes carved into them. Uh, they appear to be made of gold or brass or maybe a combination of the two. Um, with Correct. glass or crystal lenses in them pointing in various directions. And there are several human priests that are also here. Some of them look a little young, but most of them look like they've they've seen some years. Crash? Yes? I beg you to tell me that there is a font of holy water. <laughs> there is not, actually. There is no font of holy water in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Room. I heard that specificity. <laughs> you are in a temple structure. There is bound to be holy water somewhere. With that said, does my there potion is nothing that in... I've already used cure cement hand? No, no, it does not. <laughs> and one of the priests, one of the older priests who has quite a long beard, um, steps forward and says. Is this the group of adventurers you were able to contact? Yes, yes, they are. Were you able to procure an item for exchange? It took some doing, but there is a gnome inventor nearby who said he had this as a white elephant gift. We don't know what that means, and to be honest, we didn't really bother to ask. And he holds out a box, and Axilla takes it, opens it up, and says, Hmm, well, this might be interesting. So, as we've discussed previously, we are fairly certain that each of you has, at some point, acquired a magical item that, in addition to its own properties, is currently being used as a phylactery for a very powerful lich. More than one, in fact, because multiple magical items. We've been tracking these for, for some time, decades for, for some of them. What's a lich? A very powerful undead wizard. Ooh. So, yes, and one of the steps towards killing said undead powerful wizard is to destroy the phylactery, because if you don't, then when you do kill them, they come back over and over But I again. like having infinite throwing daggers. Can you get me yes, infinite throwing do. daggers? We know that you like that. We also are aware that for several of you, you have quite emotional attachment to the items that you possess. So we understand, we did understand before, and some actions were taken, for which I apologize immensely for the inconvenience, that you might not be willing to give them up lightly without proof that said items need to be destroyed. However, there is also young Hero here, whose <laughs> only attachment to his magical item is that he likes to play with knives. <laughs> Look, they know me, Dad. That isn't necessarily I mean, a good thing. I okay. have attended your productions, yes. So, while we don't have similar items for all of you, we do have this. And she holds up an item. It is a bracer. It does not appear to have, like, a sheathed dagger attached to it, as Heroes does. <laughs> it has a dial, it has a button, and it has a small cylinder. As a combination button dial. It, it also <laughs> has letters engraved in a little plaque that's stuck to the side of the bracer that says WMLPD. What's that say? Not a word that I can recognize. There's periods after each letter. What does it mean? Well, it's a... What were the letters, sorry? W-M-L-P-D. And at, when you say what does it mean, 
Um, Excella opens her mouth to explain this. She says, I, uh, what does this mean? She turns to the other guy. <laughs> it's, uh... We might like party days. <laughs> Actually, we do. We, we kick loose every Friday afternoon. It's fantastic. I might have one, maybe even two glasses of milk. Oh, but wait, where are my manners? I've got the note here somewhere. It's a, it's a, it's a strange name. It's hard to remember. It's wrist mounted laser pointer of doom. Whatever <gasps> that means. No, oh, no. Show me. Also, I'm can I please have a uh, like a stat sheet? <laughs> also, can I... I'll do more than that. I'll add it to your character sheet. <laughs> However, I have Perfect. a curiosity. Can you prove that there's a demon inside my wrist? I want to see it. It's not a demon. Inexplicably, it's a inexplicably, Hero and I have a similar question. I think we all have the same question. Can you demonstrate that these objects are, in fact, phylacteries for an evil lich who we... wants to do us harm? Well, we actually can, yes, but we do so by destroying the item in question. So we honestly decided we would start with Hero because Hero is most likely to be willing to trade his item for something of equivalent value. There's no emotional attachment, you see. That does make sense. Will, they are wrong. <laughs> I will happily trade my item if you can prove ahead of time that the item you offer is of equivalent value. Well, that is fantastic to hear. Uh, we will look for a similar item for, for you next, then. Uh, but first, Hero. Did you trade. put it on my sheet? Not yet. Okay. She's waiting for you to agree and hand over your bracers. What does it do? Well, uh, apparently, if you press this button here... Don't press it! Don't press it! Uh, yes, I do see the dial is, is set all the way over to the side in the red part, which I'm assuming is pretty bad. Uh, apparently, Hello, if, you, Eric. If, if you press the button here, light shoots mm -hmm. out of this thing. Am I getting that right? Yes, quite so. And it, it does things. <gasps> Ooh, but what things? Because I need, you know, like, I, I'm willing, but I need to make sure that, you know, this is just as much fun. Uh, according to the instruction manual, which... Odd. The first half of the instruction manual is just laughing at me for choosing to read the instruction manual <laughs> and belittling my intelligence. Very unfair. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't read the instructions? In any case... Readings for nerds. <laughs> I'm a cleric. In any case, apparently this can send out beams of light that vary in their intensity. Anything from doing a... Well, just making a small red dot appear to burning things a lot. Ooh. An entire Hero. page of the instruction manual is an itemized list of the insurance claim for when it was first used. Oh, my. I have a suggestion, Hero. Yeah? If we both give them our devices, I will trade you what they give me for what they have given you. No promises. I want it. <laughs> But I gotta isn't see it what more fun if the laser is controlled by someone else? Uh, quick question, Ellie. What item does uh does you have? Uh, currently, my recollection is that uh, I get a plus one to AC and saving throws. Oh, I that's think it's boring. a ring. That's boring. <laughs> All right, I mean it's fair, but on the no, other hand. That's what I was wondering. I, mean, I want to make sure that it is hero quality. I mean, you'd have better chance by offering hero the chemical factory cipher that makes hero sweat out a random chemical. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Uh, also fair, but I don't know what they're going to offer me for. Well, that's the thing is that I hero does not do the long term thinking. Hero is currently going, I have a shiny thing right in front of me. I might be willing to trade once I see what your new shiny thing is going to be, sure, but I'm so not going to promise before I see it. And my, this group has had eight your, hours your, to look for one thing. You're absolutely right. And and what I intended to my, what I intended to say was <laughs> uh, assuming 
what they give me is of a similar quality. Well, right now, your current item is boring, so I don't want your new item. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> well, let's see Let's see what they offer me. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I... Hero is saying, put that on hold, Z's, and we'll come back to it. <laughs> okay. Well, at this point, Arepa... Not Arepa. Um, that's somebody else. Excella is holding up this bracer. I want it. And holding out a hand because she's willing to trade you, but it's got to be a trade. Okay. I take off the cuff. You see, like, the fur underneath has been pressed down by the cufflinks. <laughs> oh, yeah. I fully okay. expected that. We're vibrant. Okay. I take it. Because it hasn't been faded enough by the sun. Okay. Yes. Um, reload your character sheet, Millie, and you will see the new item. It even includes some backstory, which I suppose is going to be the entirety of the part of the instruction manual that you read before you lose interest. Um, with that said, um, mm-hmm. Excella I'm now takes... looking at the instructions. Excella... <gasps> it tells me to yell QQ. It, it says that's an optional thing you can do, but yes. <laughs> Um, so with that said, right. Excella takes the bracer that Hero has taken off and puts it over on a pedestal that's in the center of this apparatus with all these rings and crystals and everything. And each of the four priests that is here uh, moves into a position in front of one of the larger discs. Now, this will only take a little while. Uh, we can only do this once a day, mind you. It takes a lot out of us. But assuming that this is a phylactery, which we are fairly certain it is, uh, when it is destroyed, you will see a significant amount of necromatic energy rise up out of it. Uh, it will look sort of grayish and black and shadowy and for the most part be incredibly creepy to observe. If we are wrong and it ends up not being a phylactery the energies that you see being emitted will be a bit more uh, sparkly sparkly yes we hope for not the sparkles we hope for the necromantic stuff because that means that we were correct and we are one step closer to destroying a powerful lich right so off we go and they begin channeling their energies they use up all of their spell slots because that's what this particular device does. Um, beams of celestial radiant energy shoot forth from each of these priests. They go through these def- different lenses. They bounce off of a few mirrors. A pinwheel over to the side spins for no reason whatsoever. I don't know who left that there. That's not actually part of the device. One of the local kids was playing or something. I don't know. And they all converge right on this bracer that Hero has enjoyed for quite some time. And it disintegrates. A significant amount of black smoke emanates out from the space in which it was and rises up slightly before fading away. And the priests are all quite happy with this because it means they're right. It means that they are on the right path to destroying this evil, horrible, undead abomination. And right as they are starting to congratulate themselves, something else happens. Neat. Some type of bluish smoke also erupts from where the bracer's bits are disintegrating. With enough force that it doesn't rise up right away, it shoots out horizontally. (laughs) It fills the entire room. It moves around you because it's some type of smoke, so it doesn't go through you. It's not that kind of thing. Somewhat less neat. Um but it's at significant volume to the point where you feel like you're being pushed back a little bit, not to the point where anyone has to make a constitution save or anything, but you do feel some force pushing against you from this. As it hits the walls and bounces off, it does start to drift up through crevices and cracks in the walls. And this goes on for about 30 seconds, and there is amount of volume where no one can hear each other speaking to each other while it's happening. I cast Spirit Shroud. What does that do? I'm too busy playing with the laser pointer. That's on, on brand. <laughs> does laser pointer require um, attunement? I forget. Oh, it does. Uh, it. I created this item and I didn't require attunement for it. What have I done? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. 
Moving forward, you cast Spirit Shroud. What does that do? I call forth spirits of the dead, which flit around me for the spell's duration. The spirits are intangible and invulnerable. Until the spell ends, any attack I make deals 1d8 extra damage when I hit a creature within 10 feet of me. The damage is radiant, necrotic, or cold. I'm going to choose necrotic. Uh, Any creature that takes this damage can't regain hit points until the start of my next turn. And any creature of my choice that I can see that starts within 10 feet of me has its speed reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. That's a lot. And the priests here are very concerned that you just summoned a bunch of undead to hang out with you. Do any of them have tails? I'm, uh... I'm not quite sure what just happened. Do any of the undead have tails? Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't just <laughs> black. No, no, the the black we've seen before. The black was what we expected, but there was there was something, there was some underlying energies inside that item that were there for its creation. The, it became a phylactery later on, as most phylacteries do. Mm. What was the blue? I haven't the foggiest idea. Well, that's not what we expected. I rolled very low on my Arcana check. I'm clueless right now. <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to do an Arcana check just because I can. Oh I will God. allow anyone to make an Arcana or religion check I got a net to try 20. to figure it out. <laughs> okay. I got, an Arcana check. <laughs> I got a 24. So I got a okay. 21 for the net 20. I got a six, uh, 16 on Arcana. Okay. <laughs> So here's the thing. None of you has any idea what the mysterious blue smoke was. The higher you rolled, the more certain you are that this is something that has not been seen before. I'm sorry. I'm just enjoying my nat 20. <laughs> just enjoying... Oh, I, I'm, I'm thrilled with it, too. Don't be destroying any more items until we figure out what that blue smoke was. What if it's Gazika trying to communicate beyond the veil? A what? Doing what? A gazebo? <laughs> no, Gazika. That's Paige's patron. That's not. I, I thought they said gazebo. And no, Gazika, which is actually I think Ojibwe for hedgehog. Uh, Gazika is Ojibwe for he goes fast. Ah. <laughs> well. One particular hedgehog does go fast, so I guess it works. But moving forward, and enough about the campaign that ended and someone who is several countries over in a different direction, because that's Paige's patron. Um, I'll be honest, I'm inclined to agree. Shall we convene to the library to do some research? Uh, that's not really my area of expertise, but I suggest you do so. Or that is my area of expertise. <laughs> to, to be honest, I was referring to my colleagues here, but any of may you I assist? who... You, you most certainly may. You, you have experience with libraries and research and studies? You have no idea. <laughs> is it, based on your manner of dress, no offense, but you seem to be more inclined to punch things a lot. Yeah, I do that too very well. Um, but no, books, I would, also like to, uh, I would also like to join if you can, as I am a, a being of religion in, in mind. I'd like to join and see if there's anything I can help. Them. I'm not Certainly. going to assist. I also, I, don't I, also want to I also very slowly just point to the iron stone spinning around my head. Yeah. I will, I will Are attempt to keep Hero out of trouble. That, or I should say, well, interfering with your research. I think that no greater responsibility can be given to any being on this planet. <laughs> By the way, hero, make another constitution yeah. save. Oh, dang it. Okay, you I got a nat 20. I got a you nat 20. A, you take another one point of acid damage from the cement on your paw. Can can do I have to lay on hand? My hand? Which, by, by the way, <laughs> it has it. started to set. It is stuck on that fur. You are more likely to get it removed with a razor blade and a bare paw, a bare hairless paw, <laughs> then you are going to by picking it out. I need help. If someone knows precedentation, they might be able to do something for you. Uh, I know thaumaturgy, so that's not going to help here. Well, thaumaturgy can work pretty well. You can start small fires. Press the digitate me. If you press the digitate them, they're not going to learn. 
<laughs> oh no, they've learned. No, 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 they they won't learn either way. <laughs> Right. You know, stay away from the concrete. Um, only when it's wet. Fair. <laughs> All right. I mean, yes. Otherwise, here. we're going to have heroes showing an aversion to cured concrete, which <laughs> will be a sign that Walking says "stay off the grass." That. And here will be like, "No." Right. Well, <laughs> in any case, the the library is right this way across our courtyard. Uh, you might be fairly impressed with the size it's, we've been able to create over the years. We've only been building this temple for five years, mind you, but we've still acquired a vast amount of books of study on the undead and magical items, phylacteries and the like. Um, the Ogmanites were of great assistance in that regard. Uh, one Marwise, we've never actually met Marwise in person, but she seems to be quite learned and very helpful. Okay. And as you step into the courtyard, oh dear, I, I don't think this is normal behavior for our associates. Uh, you see, there are a few dwarves that are swinging their masonry tools around, attacking pretty much everyone they can. Um, various human helpers, other dwarves. <laughs> There's a lot of running and screaming and crying. And we all die. Yes, and then no, rocks fall. Like everyone dies. Laser pointer of doom. I realize we were on the plane of Earth again. It was made at the net. I think it was that blue smoke. <laughs> wait, wait! Didn't we fight yeah. Bob before? That doesn't quite make sense. If it was the blue smoke, we were right in the thick of it. it we fought done something before to us and first. people attack others, but then we made them stay because my acting was so good. To be fair, that was a fog. Yeah, and there was a weird fog, and now people are acting funky. I don't know. It just seems similar. <laughs> well, after a one-hour break, we'll find out. Well, Yeah, we have been playing for close to an hour, so what do you say we took, take a short break? And when we come back, you'll it find out. Like, Sorry? It feels like five minutes of actual D&D. <laughs> yeah. True. No, no, Sorry. it was all D&D, but there might have been five minutes of plot. <laughs> Well, no, no, that's not true. It was five minutes of plot that I had control of. Yeah, we actually did a few things. Yes, there, there were a few things that occurred. But in any case, I'm going to press some buttons. We'll be back in a little bit. back hey everyone roll for initiative yay my favorite oh, phrase yeah. i got an 18 i got a 19 i got a well, 9 good for you and a 21 <laughs> <laughs> hero mode like is easy to slip back into in case you couldn't tell sometimes i don't think you leave it to be quite honest that's valid okay i am going to press the start button and oh Fun fact, none of you goes first. Huh? Oh. A is thing it the, goes first. The dwarves. I don't like when you just have thing. Yes. Well, apparently, um, it's not just the dwarves attacking. There are other beings that are out and about. And at first, you didn't notice them right away because none of them appear to be entirely corporeal. Uh, I'm going to copy paste an image of the thing that's going first. No. Um, well, the bad news no. is it's coming right at you. <laughs> the worst news is it appears to be sparkly. <gasps> yes. Can I catch it? No. Dang it. <laughs> uh, well, you most certainly may attempt this on your turn, but it is not your turn. It is going first. Uh, it was doing something else, but when your group including the four priests, uh, step out of the building that you were in, it turns, looks at you with 
I want to say a blank expression, but it doesn't have an expression. It doesn't have a face. It has a spot where its face should be, and inside of that you see a starscape. And it doesn't walk towards you. It glides. It floats. It it makes a ballistic trajectory towards you. I want to learn how to glide. Unfortunately, the best we can do is give you these moon shoes. Uh, yes. Not quite the same thing. Um, I am not... I'm- I am not canonically giving you moo shoes. Dang it. <laughs> I am also not giving you moo shoes, which would basically just be shoes that have a little voice recorder inside that says moo every time you step. Not doing uh, that. That won't help with my stealth. I'm going to guess that gives me a disadvantage. Also, <laughs> I'm thinking of Hero and how Hero would probably even like it. Uh, but in any case, it has a multi-attack, so it's going to. So the old priest guy, who seems to be the spokesman or leader or whatever for this merry band of priests. Um, Well, he was the first one out the door because he was going to lead you to the library. But instead of taking you to the bibliotheque, instead he's getting a face full of sword. Spectral sword, which is not the best kind of sword. And that is a hit. The second attack is also a hit. Huh. Oh. Um, So I misread this. It does list the damage for the attack, and I looked at that and said, okay, well, he's going to be bloodied, but this is okay. But no, it's one type of damage plus another type of damage. That's, um, that's more than he has. You're so, him. yeah, You're the guy him. who gave you the fancy bracer has now just been slashed into pieces. He's been murdered to death. I don't like well, that. escalated. <laughs> it did escalate pretty darn fast. Yes. I'm not a fan. Nix, what would I'd you like, like to do? Um... Yeah, I'm going to do Magic Missile. I mean, it's a classic. 12. 12 points of damage? Yes. I'm assuming this is at Starface. Yes. That is not their actual name, by the way. Yes, it is. (laughs) Hero doesn't know anyone's actual name. (laughs) Too late. Yeah, too late. (laughs) Okay, so um, now you remember, not all of you remember because not all of you were there, but a while back... There was a break-in attempt at the theater, and there were two mm. individuals who were trying to steal your magical items. One of them was Excella, and she apologized for the inconvenience. And the other was this guy. Oh, hi. Yeah. He is oh, also yeah. here. And is he, like, like good? Well, no, not. he was described no. as somewhat impetuous. Compared to Excella's reservedness. But he's on the payroll for the clerics, so he is attacking the spectral things. Oh, okay, okay. With That's his giant flaming so sword, because of course he is. Okay, I gotta ask because I know where that art's from. Does that art actually have anything to do with what he actually is? Yes. 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 You need to oh, stop. I love you. You're my favorite person. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are the only one who knows. <laughs> yes, because he never stuck around long enough to have a conversation. Other than to be like, yes, I know you told me this was a bad idea. Shut up already. No, essentially it means I know what this person is capable of or potentially capable of. Yes. And you still you see him murdering ghosts to death. Nice. Yes. So, Thandrin, it is your turn. You have Starface in front of you, but there are other spectral entities around and a few dwarves that seem to have joined the side of the spectral entities for some reason. Okay, the giant thing, the spectral entity I'm going to go for, or run at. <clears throat> okay. Well, technically it's not giant. It's medium-sized. But medium it looks a bit sized, large. Okay. It looks a bit larger because it's kind of wispy and there's things sticking out of it in various directions. And also it's floating above the ground, so it's taller than all of you. Yes, even okay. Hero. Okay. I'm going to do um, two unarmed strikes on it. And uh, I'm assuming that your unarmed attacks count as magical at this level. Not yet. When I sex, they do. One more level. One more level. So 13 for the first. A 13 will hit. Oh, wow. Okay. And that was almost real good, uh, but it worked uh, to be a 16. So that'll hit too. Okay. So that's... I will tell you right now, you're doing half damage because you're not hitting anything. I assumed and I will half them for you. So the first was four damage total. And the second is uh, also for damage total. Uh, as a bonus action, I will dump a key point and 
do flurry of blows for two additional unarmed strikes. Uh, so 17, so that'll hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if D&D Beyond wants to catch up and let me roll, no. that'll be great. So, oh, that was almost a natural 20. I hate it when it does that. <clears throat> uh, but it, it was still 21, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, first is six damage total. Uh, no, sorry, three damage total. That's a half. Thank you for reducing it for me. No problem. And this, uh, we're rounding down, yes? Yes, always round down. So it goes to four damage total and uh, extract aspects. Okay, so you are looking for all of its resistances and immunities, right? Uh, yes, I learn its damage vulnerabilities, damage resistances, uh, damage immunities, and condition immunities. Okay, so vulnerabilities, none. Okay. Resistances, necrotic. And the traditional bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Okay. Immunities from damage, poison. Okay. Condition immunities, charmed, exhaustion, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, restrained, and also being turned into a partridge and placed in a pear tree. Okay. That, that um, last one is pretty odd. You don't know why it's in there, but apparently it is. One, but I think I think seasonally we're about right for it. Um, I will just uh, af- after pulling back from the last punch, I'll just shout out, avoid necrotic and poison, and that'll be my turn. It looks at you, and you hear a voice, not in your head. It's emanating from this thing, but it doesn't have a mouth, so you don't know how it's speaking. It's okay. you assume a wizard did it because, of course, usually a wizard did it. Um, yeah, usually. Yes. You should have avoided this line of work. The master will end you. Again, escalating. I don't like it. (laughs) You brought this on yourselves with your attacks. This is retaliation. Is it my turn yet? Unfortunately, yes. (laughs) Ha ha! It's hero time. And you have a laser pointer. So, sorry, very quick. You said it was immune to stunning, yes? Um, it is immune to poison, not stunning. Condition oh, immunities. Oh, condition immunities. Da, da, da. Charmed, exhaustion, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, restrained. So it can be stunned. Good to know. Dang it, I can't restrain it. Okay, good to know. <laughs> you can try to hug it if you want. Well, no, because I was going to cast Ensnaring Strike, but now I might as well go with the other one. <laughs> this is why cobalt soul monks are so cool. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm now service. going to cast Hail of Thorns <laughs> instead of Ensnaring Strike. Uh, make a dexterity thir- uh, dexterity save. Rolling now. Uh, that is a 17. Dang it. Okay, so you still take half damage, though, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, anyways, so I'm going to use my uh, Laser Pointer of Doom because it's magical. And because it's new and shiny. I mean, literally shiny. There's a brass plate with its name engraved on it. <laughs> yeah, so I got a 21. A glancing blow. To hit. Now, what setting are you using it at? I'm using it on the base setting because okay. I need to use magic. Okay. It has a plus 10 to hit, so I'm like, wow, that went up high. <laughs> anyway. Well, the braces didn't have so a plus see, to so hit. Do. This does. Yeah. Uh, and then it's that plus, okay, I'm typing the numbers in the chat so I don't forget them, because then I also have the the Colossus Slayer, which gets me a 1d8, that's plus that, and then... So basically Hero, um, (laughs) for Chris's benefit, uh, Hero has picked the Ranger subclass that allows Hero to be kind of like a monk where you just say, oh, you like damage? I am adding damage to my damage so we can have more damage. Yeah. Very cool. Is this a plant? No. (laughs) Okay, I just got to ask. Are we in a forest? No. No. (laughs) Okay. And before you ask, before you ask, before you ask, the vial... (laughs) <laughs> the vial that you no longer have that could cure any disease cannot cure this thing. I can attack twice, so I should roll again for that hit. Well, you haven't told me your damage from the first one yet. Okay, so it's that. So that is 18. Okay. 
And it is magical fire damage. And then we're going to... Yep. And then we're... Ooh. So then does a 19 hit? A 19 will also hit. Okay. So then but I think we're you only get do... uh, one of those bonuses once per turn, I think. The yeah, once slayer. a turn. But I still, for my second hit, I got 11 points. How do you want to do this? Oh. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am going to jump in the air, and I'm going to pew, pew, pew. Uh, the instructions told me to. Um, <laughs> to be fair, the instructions said it's optional, but it was suggested. <laughs> um, right, right in between the eyes. It doesn't have any, or but right where, where the eyes be. should be, you send magical beams of yeah. fire through it, and it sort of dissipates. And thorns. It dissipates a lot. Okay, it had ten hit points remaining. So congratulations, you have oh, killed. A, you have killed the ghost. <laughs> Well, one of them. There are still plenty other beings here to slay. So Eric, who is playing Jaren, who is there doing the traditional player character in combat stance where they're sort of just bobbing back and forth, doesn't have to go out of combat and go, I didn't even get to hit anything. He just kicks a small rock away. <laughs> <laughs> you will have your moment to, si- to shine, sir. Um, for example, one of the other things that's attacking... Um, happens to be a scary-looking ghost elf lady. Not that anyone should be concerned about a scary-looking ghost elf lady. Oh, oh hey. pretty. Oh, hey. Yes. That looks um, horrible. Well, she might have had a bad day. Fair. And she's willing to share. You had a bad day. Take um, it on now. Because she has also noticed you. And she sees that you're actually quite capable because you took out one of her fellow undead. So she wails at you. I knew she would sing a sad song just to turn it around. Yes. That's a constitution saving throw for everybody. Oh, I've done a lot of these today. Yes, but to be fair, oh. those were for your own mistakes. Um, yeah, I got a Priest 13. number two has My failed. luck. I was like, I've, d- I've had a lot of luck. I've got a lot. These priests are not rolling well. Nor did Santos. Well, oh, no, that's that's five. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair... Uh, one of the priests that I rolled for rolled worse than you. I rolled a two for one of them. Oof. All right. So we're about what... to lose another priest. <laughs> Your target number is 13. So, Hero, you just make the save. Yes. Yes. Um, oh. So you're fighting a Banshee right now. Fifth edition Banshees are actually not as bad as previous editions. But this is pretty bad. If you fail your save, and it looks like in this particular group, that is Xanthus with your five, um, you drop to zero hit points. That's unpleasant. Yes. Oh, did father die? Well, no. No. Father gets to roll death saves. Not quite the same thing. (gasps) If you make your save, if you make your save, congratulations, you take 10 psychic damage. Ugh. Dad, I want to go home. All three of the surviving priests are not currently surviving. They're all down. Excella is still up. And next up is Excella. Dad, I want to go home. Next is what? Are we going to die? Um, well, Xanthus might because Xanthus is doing death saves. But we'll find out. Uh, this this is not a single. Just talking to what you can say so. <laughs> This is an invasion force. This is not a single attack going against the party. This is a powerful force of undead that look like they are ransacking the entire temple grounds. Um, So, Excella turns towards the party and says, you should probably leave. And then turns and immediately attacks the Banshee. We gotta get father! Yes, that is a good job for you. Kermit just doesn't get a break, does it? Kumich got a break for a few years. It's been 15 years since the last Undead Invasion. That's a record. I mean, for them, it is. Because there were, for 100 years, it was constant. Yeah. Which they actually adapted from that. The reason why you might be encountering all spectral forms of Undead is because there are no corpses in Kumrich. They do cremation. Exclusively. Exclusively cremation. Um... Actually, I don't know if the kobolds do cremation. There might be a kobold undead army rising up at some point. I'll have to decide about that. Um, Good news. And that is two misses. Excella gets two attacks, and she misses both times. Uh, Next up, a dwarf with a crazed look in his eyes is running towards the party, going, 
I can't stop myself. Run. <laughs> and he is holding a pickaxe high as he's running towards you, but he's not going to get you this turn. Xanthus. I will roll a death save. That is a d20 straight up, is it not? Yeah, it is. There are a rare set of abilities that allow you to add something to that, but for the most part... It's just a higher or lower. Yep. Yep. Just try and avoid the one. Yep. It's the loneliest number that there ever was. Too many dice to display. <laughs> 16. Uh, 16. I'm not dead yet, but I'm not better either. Okay, so that's one successful save. Mm-hmm. All right. My turn, A done. being that looks like evil black smoke, which I will share a picture with you here. Um, they're Is not going the after you. Is that thing that came out of my weapon? Mm, well, it looks similar, but you saw that dissipate, and there's a lot more of this than there was smoke in the bracer. Uh, but in any case, you see this thing uh, fly over and envelop a cleric that's on the far side of, of the temple grounds, and they just start screaming. Jaren, it's your turn. Jaren would like to take out his holy symbol from his chest under his plate, directed around him, and how many unholy people are around 30 yards of me? Or 30 feet, uh, I'm sorry. Within, within 30 feet of you, I would yeah. say, well, it depends on your opinion of the dwarf that's running towards you. But I would say at this point, one or two, depending on your opinion of the dwarf. Is the white elf in 30 feet of me? She is one of the ones I was referring to. Um, I would like to say, yell at uh, the undead dwarf, and I would like to say, Well, the dwarf turn. doesn't look undead. Look at the elf and say, turn. Okay. DC 15, wisdom. Okay, what's his bonus? Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, it does not make that. It got a 12. All right. As a, um... <clears throat> is there a limit to challenge rating for that? Uh, well, the for to... Destroy it, give it a uh, destroy it. It's I think it's like half a challenge rating. I'm just trying to get get this particular fiend, this undead, turn for a minute until or until it takes damage to try and get everybody back up again. Okay. Um, now does does this only work on one undead or does it work on it's, all of it's them within any, range? Any undead, each undead that can see or hear me within thirty feet, any undead. Okay. Well, that means I got to make another roll. Oh, that is much worse. Okay, so the dwarf that was running towards you just sort of stops and collapses and something ethereal rises out of his body and turns and flees. Okay, so just as a free action, pick yourself up. We have one minute, and I'm going to go ahead and, for, as a bonus action, um, use... Uh, where is that? Uh, healing word on... I'm going to use a uh, third level healing word on Xanthus. Okay. Uh, and that is a 13 uh, hit points. Yay. Back to Xanthus. Xanthus, you notice that you are not dead. I, I'm, a, I'm on the ground again. I fell down. Why did that happen? <laughs> you pulled a me. Make a decision. Uh, we fight or we run. What are we fighting? I saw, I heard a scream and then blacked out. It appears to be an invasion force of undead. I do not think we can beat them. We run, then we need to go. What about now. the priests? They're dead. Let's go. <laughs> I will save out. who I can. There is a tunnel behind whatever that thing is that we used earlier. Take it. It will lead you to the kobolds. The undead are turned. We need to go now. The who? Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel through the mountain. I'm, I'm sorry, what? but that amuses me more than it should. <laughs> <laughs> We need to because make a decision now. Reference. 60 seconds to right. so go away quickly. I'm, I'm, I would like us to just be running now, please. Let's go. Yeah, I, I'm okay. going. Yeah. That's it. We're going to run. Okay. Okay. I, I heard a noise and fell down, and now you're telling me we need to run. Okay. Yeah. We're going to grab the person by the shoulder and just start running with him. <laughs> I pick up Dad because his legs are short. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I, it makes me feel strong. <laughs> uh, give me a strength check. Oh, no. <laughs> Is it a strength check? Yes. Okay. I got a 16. Um, You do manage to pick Jaren up slightly. It is very awkward, and your movement is reduced by half. Because while he's um, shorter he than you, agility. he's not lighter than you. Good thing I got feline agility. That doesn't help with strength checks. It helps with speed, though. 
Not when you're over encumbered. <laughs> oh, I can't put, fast travel. Put me down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. As a joke, I know the answer, but almost as a joke, I want to check the primeval awareness to see if I can find any um, aberrations, celestials, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead around me. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Many of them. You're, you're looking at the little tracker device and you see all these little blips of dots ar- around the, the crosshairs that are just like every time it blips. aliens where they find yes, all exactly. the aliens in the little detector. You, you're oh, seeing thinking, every time it blips, they're closer. I was thinking more of along the line of space balls when it gets jammed. <laughs> Only one man in the universe would dare give me the raspberry. Yes. Anyway, we're running. Anyway, anyway, you run. You run. Do you run the direction you were told to run, or do you run some other direction? Uh, I you run the direction we were told to run. Yeah, direction we were told. Okay, so you run past the the weird apparatus, which is fine. There is a door in the back uh, against the back wall. You open that up, and there is a small storage room filled with barrels and crates barrels. Um, and Speaking scented candles. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. It's, I made a crate and barrel reference, which is actually also a Game Grumps reference. Never mind. Um, but there is also uh, what appears to be a trap door that it's not a hidden trap door. It's just a door in the floor and you open it up and there's a staircase. You go down that and there is, in fact, a rather well-constructed tunnel. Um, oh, we're in the tunnel tunnels. <laughs> right now, well, right now, Jaren would tell you that this definitely appears to be dwarf construction. It is not even something that requires a roll. A dwarf, look, a dwarf looks at this and says, you see that? High quality work. Definitely dwarf. It was a cold balls, wasn't it? Well, this is definitely dwarf. Mm. La- later on, he might be lying if he says it's dwarf. But right now, it's dwarf. Okay. Um, dwarves are building the entire complex, so it stands to reason. Um, and there are torches lining it that each has a magical light because... If they're going to stay lit for a long period of time, you're not going to actually light an actual torch. No one's going to be sent down here to just replace them over and over again. That's not fair. Um, I'm still thinking about how I've been playing Skyrim and I go into these crypts where they've been locked up for centuries, thousands of years, and there's a whole bunch of lit candles in there. Well, duh. Like, how long have those been burning? But in any case, you are going through a dark tunnel. Congratulations. Proud of you. Um, Except... There's something in here with you. Is it a friend? It is in front of you. And it is hunched over. It has black, sickly, mottled skin. And at first you think it's opening its mouth wide at you to scream. But you're not quite sure. Is it a friend? You can ask it. Are you a friend? It... Doesn't look like a friend. <laughs> it does not. You are what? doomed. You're not the first person to tell me that. Are you my friend? <laughs> I would like everyone to make a DC 13 constitution saving throw. I tried that once. I'm good at these. Oh, 17. You make it. Ooh. I think Three. that means it's my friend. <laughs> it is not your friend. Yay, I made one. Proud of you. Three. That one. <laughs> Because <laughs> oh, no, hey, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a okay. on the other one. So, uh, was no the ability that just got used is called Death Gaze. That's fun. <laughs> His long running participation in this campaign of two episodes. Um, you know what? I would not be opposed, and I know that this is something that Chris would do which is the only reason I'm bringing this up, I would not be opposed to something where, like, Chris keeps bringing in a character of the week, where they come in, they help for a little while, then die off immediately. <laughs> I have enough characters to do that for about 100 episodes. <laughs> I know. It, it's incredible that we could probably pull that off. Like, Okay, so who's your character this week, Chris? Uh, I made a kobold named Spurt. Cool! Yeah. I have a lot R.I.P. Of Spurt. He lasted for one session. <laughs> Not even the whole session. 50 minutes. That's what you get for throwing a wasp hive at a giant when you're a kobold. <laughs> oh, that was glorious, though. Um, so back to the game, because, oh, yeah, we're playing Dungeons & Dragons. Um, if you... 
saving throw fails by five or... Let me double check. When a creature that can see the Bodak's eyes starts its turn within 30 feet of the Bodak, the Bodak can force it to make a constitution saving throw if the Bodak isn't incapacitated and can see the creature. If the saving throw fails by five or more, that creature is reduced to zero hit points. That sounds familiar. Unless it is immune to the frightened condition. Can I um, can I put my laser pointer in its eyes and stop it? Um, not and stop it. No, this is a gla- this is a gaze ability. Otherwise, so if you failed the save but not by five, so if you rolled um, higher than that, you take sixteen psychic damage on a mm. failed save. Um, so that one and a three. <laughs> <laughs> so we got two more characters down okay uh, I got a 17 so what did I get it does Be not alive. say it does not say anything about half damage on a successful save so you take no damage at all okay um, do I have to roll initiative or do we just run past we are at it? this point going to roll for initiative yes unless you decide you're not going to fight okay. this thing and just abandon your two unconscious players. Yeah, because I was like, I can, I, I will cure them when I get a moment. Uh, 11. 15. Damn. I actually have cure wounds. I made sure that I could heal 13. someone. <laughs> I heard uh, 13 for a Reaper. Not Reaper. A Nyx. Father and I are, are twinning. Ellie had to step away, but a is still in the initiative order, so that was the first gnome I saw. Um... <laughs> What's Xanthus's role? There it is, seven. And... Oh, wait. So it's Hero. I thought, no, no, that that's the wrong number. I was looking at Heroes. No, no, no it's Heroes, too. You're sharing. Sharing is caring. By the way, the two initiative roles are specifically because Eric is playing tonight, and I know how much he loves it. <laughs> that's his favorite thing. I yeah. provide a valuable service. I'm ready for my first death save. Um, well, at initiative 20... A celestial being flies past the entire party. It's a nice angel lady. She does an attack called flyby, which basically means that she does not invoke an attack of opportunity as she goes past this thing. Ah, her deus ex machina. Well, she's not attacking with a super powerful magical item, so there's that too. Um, She's doing two things. The first is the attack. That's a nat one. So she comes in and looks spectacular, but doesn't do much. Uh, however, she does do something else. She provides battlefield inspiration. Um, let's see. Who is down specifically? It's Thandrin and Nyx, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So battlefield inspiration is going to Hero, Jaren, and Xanthus. What that basically means is um, until the end of the nice angel lady's next turn, you get to add a d4 to... Hold on, let me reread this properly. Each target can add a d4 to its attack rolls and saving throws. It doesn't say just one. Hmm. That's interesting. So congratulations, you're inspired. So yeah, sounds, inspired. sounds like bless. You don't even have to tell a joke. Sounds like bless, essentially. Um, except it's overpowered because it's hitting three people at once and it's not limited to just one roll. Well, bless, that's what bless does. It hits three people at once? Depending on the level of it, yeah. Okay, well, I stand corrected. Well, actually, I'm sitting right now, but you get the idea. In any case, Thandrin, how are you doing? Uh, I rolled. So let's do a roll. Oh, that was Peter and on that one there. That's five. It's still a fail, but it's, it's it wasn't a fail, that one. But it's not two fails. Yep. Okay, so is. Well, I've already said their name. The, the Bodak goes next. Okay, it is going to use a Withering <laughs> Gaze. Um, one creature the Bodak can see within 60 feet must make a DC 13 Constitution saving throw. Or take a significant amount of necrotic damage. So they are going to gaze at Jaren. It went to Jaren. How Give much necrotic? A, um, make a DC con- 13 constitution saving throw first. 19. Okay. You are going to take 11 points of necrotic damage on your successful save. Okay. As a bonus action, it turns on its aura of annihilation. Any creature that ends its turn within 30 feet of it is going to take necrotic damage. Thandrin, you are fortunate that you have already ended your turn. Yep, because that would be... <laughs> that would be a second be death save. I mean, instant second fail. Yes. Nyx. I got 11. Okay, that's a pass. Uh, but at the end of your turn, 
that is a fail because you take five points of necrotic damage, which the damage doesn't matter right now, but the point is damage is done to your body, so you're getting a fail and and the save. You have one of each. Okay. Be glad it doesn't count as melee because that's an auto crit and two fails. Yeah, this is this is an aura. It's different. Yep. Jaren, this is your time to save the day. Or at <clears> night. <throat> I didn't specify what time of day it was. Help us, little dwarf. You're our only hope. Mm. He's not little. He's Don't just short boned. Um, so I'm going to have to do... We still have two down, so let me think. Um, um all right, I'm going to do... I just got to get them stable, so I'm going to do a mass healing word. Nice. Um, turn it. Let me turn this off. Now cast. All right. Um, and that is going to give me... Or give you guys who are down... Actually, uh, it's, it's up to six creatures. We'll just do all of us. Um, uh, and that's going to be seven... Points of healing for everyone. I'm awake. Yay! I'm thinking of an old Magic the Gathering card. Where eeny, meeny, miny. Why not all of them? And that was a bonus action. Uh, my main action at this particular being uh, is going to be a Guiding Bolt. Okay. Now, here's the thing. It's Death Gaze is still active, so you have to avert your eyes to avoid it. Which is fine. I'm not requiring you to roll anything to do that. But that means you're going to have disadvantage on attack rolls. Okay, that is fine. We'll go ahead and take the, we'll take the chance. You're going to l- look right at it to not have disadvantage. We're gonna, we're gonna shoot at a general direction. <laughs> okay, okay, because that that makes more sense than risking going yeah. down to zero hit points. Okay, so I <laughs> so I rolled a ten both times because I have plus seven. Um, it's gonna be seventeen. A seventeen will hit. That is going to be 23 points of, of uh, radiant damage. It is resistant to dwarf damage. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, you hit it with a radiant. You did yes. not throw any... The dwarf was not tossed at the thing. <laughs> Therefore, it's doing okay. Well, not doing okay. You're doing okay. Um, hero, don't get any ideas. All right. And that, I think, is your turn. That is. All right. Hero. Yeah. It is your turn. I don't want to be near this thing. Well, <laughs> is there anything I, think I that can is climb? A uni- you can climb the walls, but they're actually quite short. If you stand up to your full height, your head is going to brush against it. It was made by dwarves who don't have to duck. Ugh, okay, fine. I guess I won't climb anything. Um, but anyway, I would like I would like to shoot this thing with the wristbound laser pointer of doom. Once again, on the main thing, because I don't know how it feels about magic dam- damage or not magic damage. You know? Um, well, it's... Okay, so how does a 29 do? Uh, fairly good, I think. Uh, <laughs> okay. Glancing? Uh, barely. I'm, I'm giving it to you this time. Next time, don't expect this okay, favor thank from you. Me. Okay, thank I'll you. Grant you um, hey... I'm also going to be casting the um, ensnaring strike again. It has to make a 13 strength throw. Oh, it's very strong. But that's a 6, so that's not strong enough. Okay. So that is 21 points of damage for my first hit, and it is grappled if it can okay, be. Okay, what kinds of damage? Restrained. Um, let's see. Okay. So it's 21 altogether. Five points of that is magic piercing damage. Okay. Um, and then the other 11 would be also piercing. So yeah, it's um, magic piercing damage. Okay, but... All of it's magic are, piercing damage. But you are rolling with the laser pointer of doom. So how much of that is fire damage? Oh, um, so 11 points... Uh, wait, wait. 16 points of it is fire damage, and then the other five is the plants. Okay. You do eight points of fire damage. Well, that's garbage. It's resistant to fire, even as magical. Yeah. Now, however, it is bloodied. Okay. So then for my second hit, I glare at it for a moment. I take out um, my longbow. If you glare at it, I'm going to require you to make a constitution saving throw. I will tell you that. No, I, no, I make a pouty face. Okay. Oh, and did you roll <laughs> a disadvantage for that attack? No. Should I have? Yes, because if you're looking at it, you get to roll normally, but you have to make a constitution saving throw. If you don't look at it, 
you have to roll at disadvantage. Oh, uh, at disadvantage, it was still a 16 to hit. Uh, 16 would have still hit, so thank goodness I don't have to do many more maps. Roll your second hit at disadvantage. Okay, 15. A 15 just hits, so this time not joking. Okay, and that is 10 points of damage. Oh, 10 points of fire damage? No, I used my longbow this time. That was the pouty face. Okay, is your longbow <laughs> magical? Nope. Okay, then you do five points of piercing damage. I am anger. But it is still bloodied. All right, Xanthus. Uh, Dad okay. just woke up from a nap. So and also, I'm going don't forget, to... this thing is now, um, it's now restrained. So I have advantage. Yes, because but you also have disadvantage unless you want case, to look at it. It's disadvantage. So just so it's straight even. up roll. So it breaks even. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm under a bless, which is what some sort of what uh, was it? The battle to add a D4. 1D4? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to approach it. Well, before I approach it, I'm going to cast a spell on my sword. He's got a sword. We all have swords. Uh, I'm going to cast magic weapon uh, so that my I, my weapon will now become a magical weapon. Because I've I heard something Thandard about non-magic sword, weapons not doing so well. No, they don't tend to. Yeah. So we're going to make mine magical. Uh, it will last for an hour, uh, which hopefully will end this fight very quickly. <laughs> oh, I, I hope this fight is not still going on in an hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, an hour game time. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, and then I'm going to approach We're nearing it. the two-hour mark. <laughs> yeah. I approach it, averting my gaze, but using the fact that it is restrained. So we're going to see if this works. That's a dirty 20. That hits. Uh, so I don't need to roll the bless. Uh, since I hit, I'm going to invoke my smite. Uh, I think this thing is undead because it has some sort of death gaze. It's a fair assumption. Uh, fair assumption. Yeah, I, th I think that's safe to assume. Um, and we're going to kick the second level smite to see if we can end this thing earlier. Uh, where is my smiting damage? Divine smite. Okay, so it is. Uh, it'll do 2d8. Plus 1d8 for each higher level, so that's 3d8, plus an extra 1d8 if it's undead. So it's a total of 4d8. I will roll that. It's 12 slashing damage. Oh, did I get a ghetto crit too? Yeah, I did. Oh. 12 slashing from a magical attack, specifically. Yep. So it is magical. It is 12 points magical slashing damage, along with 23 points of radiant damage. How do you want to do this? Oh, I wish, I wish you cleft it in twain. In oh. twain? From, no. from skull to crotch. Okay, and it sort of just, like, evaporates as you slash through it. Now, some would argue, Crash, that was a really easy fight. They beat it in one round. There were two people down. Yeah. <laughs> and a paladin against undead, generally it does not work out well for the undead. I was doing very well with my laser pointer and arrows, thank you. <laughs> yes, well, not everyone felt that way um, for, their, for their own efforts. But this was, a, this was glorious heroics. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I do. That's true. Okay. And Does as anyone that, still need to be healed? That we can work on. <laughs> and as this thing dissipates, um, Excella, the very nice angel lady, for those of you who've forgotten her name already, yep. Excella flies back the other way and goes back up to the trap door because there's still a fight going on up there. Well, we've got rid of the... We have two people down still. No, um, no Jaren brought them up. No, oh, that's yeah. right. They have a couple of hit points. Okay. Mass healing. I have. Yes. Do we want to heal or do we want to run? How much HP is a good idea? Have. Huh? You can hear more combat coming through the trap door that isn't very Ooh. far away. Running is probably a real good idea. Yeah. yeah. I so. Can I heal while running? Yeah. You, you can't run as fast, but action. you can heal while running. Yeah, you can't. You have to stop and take an action. I think we might be better off making our making ourselves haste. Oh, no, I agree, but if I could, like, run and, like, smack someone up in the shoulder and heal them and while running, I can do that. <laughs> if that's a spell you would have to stop to cast, so to speak. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have lay on hands, which is slightly different. Yeah, I have cure wounds. It's just instantaneous touch. <laughs> yes, I but it's still six move. seconds to cast. It's just the effect happens <laughs> well, let's, instantaneous. Let's move and figure this out yes. later. Let's go. Yes. Yeah, I agree. So you move down the tunnel, and it is a fairly monotonous tunnel, to be quite honest. There's not much to talk about for that. But Ugh. eventually, you reach a point where it stops at a door. And the architecture for this archway is very different from what you've seen before. The door is lower to the ground, and even the doors that the dwarves make for themselves 
and there appears to be a motif of lizard-like creatures in low relief all around the door jam. And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Tune in next time where the DM out chaos is hero. Nope, nope, that's not <laughs> canon. It might be, but it's not currently. All right, so that was fun. Thank you, everyone, for playing. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Tonight, we were joined by a bunch of awesome people, including Ellie, who had to leave early. We hope she is doing okay. And also Chris and April and Matt and Millie and Eric. Is there anything that anyone wants to plug? Um, I just finished my first semester at college. And Yay! I, I Yay. got three A's and a B. Sorry. Yay! I was trying to go for four A's, but it didn't work. <laughs> I will I will Yay. gaze disapprovingly to the south, which is the general direction in which you are. <laughs> Yay. But secretly I'm very proud of you. Also not so secretly. Yay. I think that's it. This is where yeah. you plug AzerothCTC.com or twitch.tv slash magical Millie. Oh yeah. I stream. <laughs> you stream. Bye. We all stream. I'm gonna get ice cream. Ooh, ice cream. All right. And we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash cogwheelgaming. You can help us keep the lights on, along with other illustrious patrons, including Chris, Ellie, Eric, Janadalok, Mickey, Shanshan, and Walter. And until next time, this is Crash saying, What do you mean they escaped? <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.